So, some African digital infrastructures are now outpacing those in Europe. But please, don't take my words for this. This comes straight from a German living in Ghana. And as someone who has lived in both Africa and Europe, I can confidently say that the Africa of 2025 is nothing like the Africa of the early 2000s. Please note, this is the second time we are uploading this particular video. The original upload was removed by YouTube due to a policy violation concerning samples ID cards shown in that video which were used solely for educational purposes. But after reviewing and correcting the issue, we are back to set the record straight. But before we dive into what the Germans are saying about Ghana's digital infrastructure, let's first look at some groundbreaking innovations putting Africa on the global map. First is mobile money revolution. Kenya pioneered mobile money with M-Pesa, allowing users to send and receive money without a bank account. Even today, many Western nations are still playing catch-ups. And this is what German ambassador to Ghana, Daniel Cruz, said about mobile money in Africa some years ago. Uh, certainly, uh, and, and not only compared to neighboring countries in Africa, but also uh, compared to my home country in some aspects, if I look at uh, the uh, extent of how um, money transfer, digital money transfer is used in your country, um, Germany is, uh, is far, far behind. Next is Cardiopad Cameroon. This is a revolutionary tablet that enables doctors in remote areas to conduct heart exams and send results to specialists, providing an affordable alternative to expensive Western ECG machines. Silicon Savannah, Kenya. This is Africans emerging tech hub producing innovations in AI, fintech, and blockchain, directly competing Western tech giants. Hydraform, South Africa. This is an eco-friendly brick technology that reduces water and cement usage, offering a sustainable and cost-effective alternative that Western countries are now exploring. And the last one is Zimbabwe Free Energy Car. A Zimbabwean inventor revived Nikola Tesla's vision by developing a self-sustainable electric vehicle that doesn't require fuel or charging. This is the red Tesla, not the other one, because Nikola Tesla wanted the whole world to enjoy free and wireless energy, but they didn't allow that. But that is not our focus for today. Today, we are spotlighting how Ghana is schooling the world on digital innovation. Take the Ghana card for example. We've already detailed all of its impressive features in one of our previous videos. Now, the government is planning to upgrade this card to function as ATM cards. In fact, this small but powerful ID is transforming lives in Ghana. And even foreigners can obtain one and it's making waves. Let's consider a story of a German expatriate living in Ghana who recently received his non-citizen Ghana card and his review on it on social media is nothing short of mind-blowing. So let's take a closer look at what he had to say. Today, I had the chance to experience an incredible, efficient and fully digitalized process firsthand. Obtaining a Ghana card, a national ID, within a short time, seamless and transparently. In Europe, we often assume we are leading the way in digital transformation, but if you take a closer look at Africa, and especially Ghana, you will see impressive technological advancement that set new benchmarks. For anyone still thinking that Europe has all the right answers in digitalization, take a look at Ghana. You might be surprised at what's possible when efficiency, innovation, and technology come together. Hashtag digital transformation innovation, Ghana, African tech, future is now, Africa, digital ID, Ghana card. The visionary behind this digital revolution is none other than Ghana's former Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Although President John Ajikum Kufo originally envisioned this project, but it was Baumia who refined and elevated the idea. For further insight, let's listen to his lecture at Harvard Business School on the importance of digitalization in Africa today. Policymakers in Africa must act with a mindset of possibilities. We should embrace technology and not be intimidated by it. We must believe that we can leapfrog the advanced nations in many areas if we put our minds to it. 
Today, I will focus on how Ghana has strategically leveraged digitalization as a tool to unlock economic opportunities key to combating unemployment and creating growth. For over 60 years after independence, Ghana had largely an informal system without many of the basic elements necessary for a modern economic system. Today, however, we are building a formal systems and database economy based to compete in the fourth industrial revolution. <coughs> Our challenge is to use digitalization to solve current problems while laying the foundation for the future of jobs, leapfrogging from the second to the fourth industrial revolution. There is mounting empirical evidence that highlights the transformative potential of digital innovation to create jobs, boost productivity, increase income levels, and foster wealth creation. Over the last eight years, Ghana has embarked on an aggressive policy of digitalization to jumpstart economic transformation of our country. However, I must state that we chose the path of digital digitalization not for its own sake. Our focus is on digital technology that can solve our problems. At this stage of our development, we are not looking to have driverless cars or humanoids, for example. We want technology that can solve our problems in agriculture, health, education, access to credit, the payment system efficiency, public service delivery, revenue mobilization, and so on. I would like to uh, close these brief remarks by touching on the broad theme of this conference, Africa beyond borders, a myth or a mandate for Africa's progress. I will argue that it is not a myth. A lot of work is going on to realize the vision of the AFCFTA. All 54 African countries have signed the agreement, and 47 of the countries have ratified it. The FCFTA is the largest free trade area in the world. And the number of countries actively trading on the FCFTA currently stands at 39 out of the 54 countries. And this signals a growing commitment across the continent. Uh, we saw an increase in intra-African trade by 3.2% in 2023 uh, to reach 192 billion US dollars. And recently, the AFCFT has also adopted a digital trade protocol to accelerate the realization of the vision. This protocol, with its annexes, paved the way for a single digital market with harmonized rules, common principles, and standards that support digital trade. It also ensures that African MSMEs ease which comprise 90% of the African market, with about 70% owned by women, youth, and, and so on, benefit from the AFCFTA. Let me conclude by saying that the digital economy holds the key to unlocking Africa's vast potential and creating jobs for the youth. By working together, governments, businesses, educators, and innovators, we can build a future where every African has the opportunity to thrive and contribute to a brighter tomorrow. Thank you very much for your attention. So the next time someone mentions tech revolution, don't just look at the West. Africa is proving that innovation doesn't require flashy labs. With just smart ideas and hard work, you can achieve everything. And that is all for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please share your thoughts and suggestions with us in the comment section below. My name is Sheriff Haruna. Have a joyful life and see you in the next one. Macrao.